This right here is the Lenovo Xiaoxin Pad Pro 2022 model, and it is by far the best budget tablet that you can buy right now in the market. Hey guys, what is up? Okay, Buzz here. So what I've got here is the Xiaoxin Pad Pro 2022 model. This is the Chinese version. Now for the global version, this is also known as the Lenovo P11 Pad Pro Generation 2 or Gen 2. Now this tablet is by far the best budget tablet that you can buy right now in the market. It is only priced at around 18,000 pesos. It can even lower down when there's a sale. So price may vary. You may want to check out the link on the video description below to check out the latest price for this tablet. Now at that price point, this is by far the best tablet that I've seen. It has an 11.2 inch OLED screen display. It comes with a 120 Hertz refresh rate. It supports HDR10 plus, and it also supports Dolby Vision. It comes with the four JBL speakers with the Dolby Atmos feature. It has a huge 8,200 milliamp battery with 30 watts charging. It comes with Android 12, brightness up to 600 nits. It also has a USB-C type with a video out feature. And lastly, it comes with a companion chipset 1300T, which is an excellent chip for a budget tablet like this. Now this tablet comes with a 6 GB of RAM. It also has a 128 internal storage. This is the best budget tablet that I've ever seen in the market. But the truth is, it also has some flaws. And most of the major ones are because of its software, which I'm going to point it out later on this video. Now let's find out what's included in the package first. Now, this is the box. It is written in Chinese as this is the Chinese version I have here. This is also a much more cheaper version than the global version, which has the same spec. Now, this is the MediaTek 1300T version. There's also a Snapdragon version for this one. That one is much more expensive than this. Now, what's inside the box is the tablet itself. There's also a free glass film protector for the screen. It comes with a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, which is about 1.5 meters long. A pen for the extra memory slot, some paperwork, and lastly will be the 30 watts adapter, which looks pretty cool because there's a 3-0 carving on it. Now that's about it on the box itself. It also comes with a jelly case. This is a frosted jelly case. It comes free when you buy the tablet. Now this is the 11.2 inch tablet. I didn't buy the pen and the keyboard with it as it's way much more expensive. Now let's talk about the design and the quality build of this tablet. So right at the top, you're gonna find the power button. It doesn't have a fingerprint scanning feature. Now there are two JBL speakers here and at the center, you're gonna find the memory slot for your extra storage. Now this model is a Wi-Fi only model. So this is not a SIM card slot. Now right on the side, you're gonna find the volume button here, which are all in plastic. Now down below, you're gonna find the other two speakers from JBL and the type C port, which is also a video out if you have an external display. Now this port, features a 30 watts charging. Now on the other side, there's a Pogo pin connector that will be useful for keyboards and the other two as well. This one is for the external keyboard to fit in on this device. Uh, now right at the back, you're gonna find the camera, uh, which is a 13 megapixel camera. It's just a one lens camera and there is also a flash below it. The Lenovo logo right at the bottom of the tablet. And you're also going to see this uh, little mark here. This is for the pen accessory. Now for the texture at the back, it has a two-tone texture. One with a reflective and the other one is a little bit of matte. And I purposely did not clean it so that you will notice that, that the back surface is very prone to smudges. Just like the one that you saw here on this tablet. Now the front facing camera is an 8 megapixel camera and it is also positioned on the side of the tablet as this tablet is meant to be used horizontally and not vertically which is usually used for video calls now this is the front facing camera test for this tablet the quality of the camera is pretty typical for tablets like this now on this setup i do have a lot of natural light coming at the window just in front of me so this is how it looks like
Now let's talk about the screen. This is where the tablet shines the most. Now it has an OLED screen with a 120Hz refresh rate. It is very, very nice. Now this is a really good OLED panel. The color is very vibrant. Um, we're going to test out the display FPS and we're going to turn on the FPS to show the FPS running. As you can see here at the top right, there is a 120 FPS there. When we open some apps, as you can see, it's still running at 120 frames per second. Now all of this is still running at 120 FPS, which is pretty great. Now right at the display and brightness settings, you can adjust it to dark and light version. The dark version looks really, really nice because of the OLED screen display. And we'll just switch it to white as for the moment. As you can see here, this is the display refresh rate, which is set to 120 Hertz. You can also turn on the night light where it will make the screen more warmer to make it easier on your eyes. You can also turn on the double tap to power on screen. And it is advisable to set the screen time out because this is an OLED. So usually for OLED screens, they will have like a burnout issue, just like a TV. So just to avoid that, you might want to set the screen time out to two to five minutes. So that when nobody's using the tablet, at least you're saving some batteries. Now let's go to the more display settings and here you can find the lift to wake. So whenever you lift up the device, it will wake the screen, which is pretty handy. You can also adjust the colors to standard vibrant and natural, but I prefer to have it default as vibrant. Now this is a flagship grade screen for a budget price point tablet. This is a really great move from Lenovo since most of the tablet that I've found doesn't have this screen, especially on this price point. Now when you're gonna play some videos on it, if it has an HDR support, then it's gonna be really, really great to look at. Okay, so now let's talk about the gaming performance. Usually tablets like this are used for entertainment like games and watching movies. It's still running pretty smooth. Even if I'm recording the, the screen, I can still move the character very smoothly, even if I'm recording the screen right now. So let's set the refresh rate to ultra and also the graphics to ultra as well. and it's still running very smoothly. Now let's talk about the UI of this tablet, which is called the ZUI. Now they've updated it to ZUI 14 right now. So what I have here is the version 14, which looks really, really good. Actually, this is my first time to use a Lenovo tablet and I really, really like it. It's just like about the same as the Mi UI from Xiaomi. It's definitely very similar. As you can see, the notifications here is very, very similar. But it also has this um, U-Touch gesture, which is also as the same as the iOS or the MIUI. You can also turn on the buttons here below, just like the typical Android navigation. But I prefer to have the U-Touch, where you just do some gestures. The good thing about the USB Type-C here is this one is also a video out. Now, when you put in the Type-C port external display, it will prompt to the navigation bar that you can go into a PC mode where the layout of the UI will be very similar to a Windows or very similar to PC, where the drawer app is located at the left bottom and you can also adjust the windows accordingly just like in Windows. Now for 4K video streaming, you can definitely play 4K videos on this device. It even supports HDR as well. As you can see here, it's playing at 2160 at 60 frames per second and with HDR. Now for the ZUI, um, you can actually do some split screens where you can float the window like this. You can also do a split screen where you will choose another app like this. And you can adjust the size of each app accordingly. So you can browse two apps together in one screen, which is really great. 
Now you press the one on the center and you can also swap it if you like and um, replace. You can replace it with another app. Um, let's say uh, gallery. You can adjust and just exit. You can also go to the task manager and press the icon there. You can press the free form for the floating window or you can also press the split screen to go into split mode, which is a really cool feature for a tablet. Very useful for a tablet, especially since the screen is too big and it will be very helpful to fit in two applications at the same time, which is great for multitasking. All right, so now let's talk about the flaws. All right, so I'm gonna start with a system update. Usually for a system update, if you're gonna like check the updates, it will check the updates automatically on the server. Since this is a Chinese ROM, it will not do an auto update. Now that's one major problem as firmware updates usually fix some bugs and issues with the current software that you have. So one of those problems will be Netflix. As you can see here at the DRM info, this product has a wide vine or wide VIN of security level L1. That means that it should be able to play HD movies on Netflix or any streaming media. From what I've experienced, it wasn't able to play the Netflix. Netflix is detecting the software as an L3 security level. So that means you won't be able to play HD movies. But when I tried to play Plex and Amazon Prime, it was able to do that. It was able to play 4K with no problem. And at Amazon Prime, it was able to play HD. It was having some issues with the Netflix. So that's one of the problems. Now HDR on the current software is broken. So you need to update the ZUI in order to fix that, which is what I have here. This one is already fixed because this version that I have is already the 14.0.640 ST. The one that I have before when I bought this one was only about 14.0, 400 plus, I think the version which was really outdated. So updating the firmware was able to fix that. Also the Netflix issues and the YouTube HDR videos. Now there's also one major problem about this tablet and that's video calls. When I'm using a tablet, most importantly, I will most likely use it to do some video calls. So when I tried to do some video call for my family or to my friends and I was using the messenger app, it was having this blinking problem. Then after about 10 to 20 seconds, it's going to reboot the device. So I did try to find a fix for that. I spent about two to three hours um, trying to, to tinker on the settings and I did find a fix for that issue. So all you have to do is go to the notification and status bar and go to the notification management and go to the messenger app then go to calls and disable the show notifications for the calls on the messenger now that was able to fix the video call issue now i can do video calls on messenger without a problem in it. uh, it's the same thing as skype you should also disable some incoming calls or some notifications like that since i was also having some problems with the skype video calls but i was able to fix that through the notification settings now, since this is a Chinese version, expect to have bloatwares installed, like Chinese bloatwares, but you can definitely just delete them right after you get the device. And also for the Google Play, um, when you restart this device, it will not have a Google Play installed on it. So you will have to go to the App Center, which is pre-installed on this device. Now, everything here will be on Chinese. Just disregard that if you don't understand Chinese and just Click on the search and type in Google Play. So this is the one that you need to download. This is the Google Play. And right after that, you just need to go to the app management and you go to the three dots here at the top right and click the Google basic services and just turn this on as this will be turned off. You just need to turn this on. And that's it. That's just how you fix those issues. It's not really a major problem once you update the firmware to the latest update. So in order for you to update the firmware, 
we just need to use a VPN and put your location to China or to any like Beijing and just click the update button there and it will, it will be able to detect the latest firmware for the ZUI. And once the download is starting, you can just disconnect the VPN and let it finish the download and install the latest update. Now, what do I think about this tablet? Well, just so you know, this is not a sponsored video. I can simply say that this is by far the best budget tablet that you can find in the market right now. It's lightweight. It has an OLED 2K screen. It has a 120 Hz refresh rate. It has an HDR 10 plus feature with the Dolby Vision and four speakers, which is really great. And with a type C video out with a PC mode, it also comes with this huge battery, which is the 8,200 milliamp battery. So far for its price point, it's really hard to beat. Now, if you're in the market to buy a tablet, I strongly recommend the Shaoxin Pad Pro 2022 model. This is the Chinese version, so it's a much more cheaper version. If you want to have like a Snapdragon version, there's also a Snapdragon version for this, but much more expensive. I strongly recommend it to buy this one since this is definitely worth your money. Uh, all right, so I think that's about it, guys. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe this video if you find it very helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.